Good evening everybody, this is once again Ted the Speed Learner and I'm going to continue my commentary on this book right here. Now do you remember in my last video when I was telling you guys about the ritual purity and I was telling you guys about the scribes which were actually the understudies of the Pharisees from Jerusalem and how they were keeping up this ritual uh, purity and yada yada yada. Okay. What was Jesus' response to this? Well, I'll tell you what his response was. First of all, he said, look, he says, when you're doing this ritual purity exercise, you're not doing it for the right reasons. You're, you're doing this like little robots. That's all you're doing. You're obeying like a little robot. You have missed the whole reason why I had this all set up in the first place. Now then, you say, well, this doesn't happen in modern times. Oh, yes, it does. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Yada, 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 yada. Okay. That's the Lord's Prayer. Do you know how many people chant that every day? They have no idea why they're chanting it at all. Do you know that that prayer was not something you were supposed to chant, but in essence what it was supposed to be was supposed to be a blueprint. It was supposed to be designed so that you could you could make your prayers in a blueprint similar to what Jesus was saying in the Lord's Prayer. Now you say, well, I'm still confused. Okay, well, don't you have a blueprint and then you use the blueprint to build a house? Same concept. You're going to build a prayer like you would build a house. When you say, give us this day our daily bread, you know what that actually means? First of all, you're thanking God for the meal you've already had. Okay, say you've just had your me evening meal. You've just thanked God for your evening meal. But then you're also saying, hey, I hope you provide me my meal for the next morning. That is acknowledging that without God, you're not going to have a meal the next morning. That's the way that works. Now, I can't tell you how many people forget to do this. I'm as guilty as the rest of you. I don't necessarily sit there every day and every night, and I, and I should. You're right. I mean, I'm as guilty as the rest of you. And sit there and say, hey, Lord, thank you for the meal I just had. And more importantly, I'm asking you for the meal that is yet to come. You should do that. And I should, too. And we should keep each other accountable for that. We should say to each other, Hey, you know what? Did you actually thank God for the meal you just had? And did you ask God for the next meal you're going to have? Pretty good. If you want to get into a good habit, that's the good habit to get into. And believe me, good habits are just as hard to start as bad ones. Okay? So. What about... Uh, Forgive us our trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. You know what that actually means? That is first acknowledging that we'll never live up to the standards of God. God didn't design us that way. Shoot, even look at the flowers. If the flowers aren't in the dirt, they die. Same type of concept. The point is that God really is a God if he has a group of people that can actually obey his laws so well, you don't need God. That's just the whole thing. If you could obey those laws 24 hours a day, like Jesus does, you wouldn't need Jesus. It doesn't work that way. So, does that mean we just go out and sin, do whatever thunder we want? No, that doesn't mean that just means we're acknowledging that we we really cannot live up to God's standards. And that's a good thing to do because that says God's still in charge and there's a good reason for him to be in charge. So, and um, what about the, the keeping the devil from tempting us? What you're in essence saying to God is We are vulnerable to Satan's attacks, but we know you're not, and we're asking you to keep us from being attacked by Satan. 
Because we know you're powerful enough to keep Satan out of our out of our lives. See me? And when it comes to forgiving others um, for their trespasses, what we're in essence saying is that because we know we are so bad, it makes it a lot easier to forgive others. Now, forgiving is not letting these people walk over you. There's a big difference in that. Let me get that straight. You can forgive somebody and say, look, you're not coming to this house again because I know you're going to steal everything in the house. It's not that we're holding a grudge. We're not holding a grudge. We just know that you're not going to come in here and steal all our stuff again. There's a big difference between letting somebody walk all over you and forgiving somebody. Say, look, I'm not going to go near you anymore because every time I go near you, you try to punch me out. But I'm not going to hold a grudge against you. I'm not going to go after you. I'm not going to punch you out because you, you punched me out. I've turned the other cheek, but by gollies, I'm not going to let you punch me anymore. See the difference? You still don't have the right to punch me, but I'm not going to punch you just because you punched me. That's where the eye for the eye and the tooth for the tooth comes in. Okay? Now Jesus takes this one step further. And he says, Okay. Do you know how you Pharisees and Sadducees and Essenes, you give all this money to the temple despite the fact that your parents and your brothers and sisters are facing eviction and starvation? Sure, they're wearing tattered clothes. They can't hardly eat. And more importantly, they have no place to stay. But you're giving all that money to the temple. That's breaking the fifth commandment. Oops. He was saying, look, you're not honoring your mother and your father but making sure that they're still okay. You're just letting them starve on the street. Yet you're filling my temple up? Your priorities are backwards. Well, that didn't set well with the Pharisees, Sadducees, and Essenes. And that's why Jesus ended up on a cross. See what I mean? But Jesus could be that bold. We can too, but we have to do it under his name, not ours. All right. So now you know the whole story. You know what's really going on. I will tell you more in a future video. Stay tuned.